Coming up on this edition of INTV, we delve into the science behind Britannia and discover just what she's made of. From our sites to your shelves, we look at the history of INEOS Hygienics. INEOS have joined forces with Oxford University to tackle the looming danger of antimicrobial resistance. All this and the latest news from across the INEOS group. This is in TV. We're coming to you this month from the base of INEOS Team UK here in Auckland, New Zealand, where over the last few weeks, these new AC75 yachts have given us some of the most thrilling racing we've ever seen in America's Cup history. The team put up a good fight, but sadly, the 170 year wait to bring the Cup back to the UK continues. So Ben and the team over the last few months have demonstrated real grit, rigor and determination and we at INEOS are enormously proud to have been a part of it. Game on, race eight. And coming on the breeze now. I was really proud of the team. When we went Jack in, we went down fighting. And... It's closed up. Ineos more breeze. Look at the lead now. It's so close. Pressure here. Good game, lad. 170 years of hurt continues. And it's going to turn up here. Ineos Team down. UK are out. Sorry, guys. Not going to happen. That's a good effort, though. Every single person in this organisation has grown tremendously in the last four years and worked incredibly hard to turn things around, so I'll always be very proud of the team for that. Thanks, We've been exceptionally lucky to be out here racing in the Prada Cup and very, very grateful for that support. And uh, I don't think this is the end of the story. I think we're committed to getting the America's Cup back to Britain and we're going to learn from this, go back to the drawing board and come back and do a better job in the future. Now it's no exaggeration to say that INEOS literally makes the building blocks of modern life. Our products go into all sorts of things, from clothes to mobile phones to yoghurt pots, even to America's Cup boats. Let's take a closer look. Watching INEOS Team UK's Britannia, it's easy to be swept up by her lightning speed, unique design and the immense talent on board. Ten seconds to attack. But to really understand what makes it so special, you have to delve into the boat's core, right into its core. People don't see it, they see the boat racing on the race course, but ahead of that there is a lot of long days, long night for a lot of people along the way. In fact, there are over 50,000 construction hours that went into the project before it even reached the water. INEOS Team UK has used recycled materials as they commit to closing the loop on a circular economy. At the end of last America's Cup, all the teams tried to bring everybody together towards a sustainability goal for this America's Cup. The team, in partnership with ELG, instantly put their best foot forward. Early in its creation, the boat was shaped from a plug. Once covered with recycled carbon fibre, this would become the mould in which the boat would be formed. What the LG did is they recycled all our AC35 carbon fibre waste and we used that waste to make the mould of Britannia. We shred the waste material to get a consistent length of, uh, of fibres. That fibre is then put through a furnace to remove any resins or uh, waste material. Then we convert that into a matting. And that is the material that then goes to INEOS to use in their moulds. So something which would have ended up buried in the ground is now a very useful and attractively priced material. The cradles that support the boat when out of the water are also made with 1.2 metric tonnes of ELG recycled carbon fibre. Waste is not good in any environment. And if we can recycle the carbon fibre and effectively use it more than once and potentially reuse it again for a further purpose, then the uh, environmental impact of constructing the material reduces and reduces and reduces. Moving around the boat to the Hullam foil, these were made from state-of-the-art Japanese carbon fibre from the specialists at Torrey. 
Tori has been involved in the process from 2018. They agreed to discuss with Ineos team on which material type and format would be the best choice for their design. This cutting edge material can also be found in aeroplanes, bicycles, and cars. To raise quality control and ability to tweak ingredient ratios as per requirements meant they were the perfect producer. Carbon fiber is light and strong. The strength of carbon fiber is 10 times higher than that of steel. The key ingredient of carbon fiber is the acrylonitrile, and here is where INEOS come into this story. This unique product created by INEOS is used to make acrylic fibers which are stretched at high temperatures, carbonize, and become interlocking. Carbon fiber enables structures which are light and resilient against extremely severe environments, salt water, raging waves, gusts of strong wind, and changing temperature. In the three years it has taken INEOS Team UK to research and build their boat for the America's Cup, the team have developed materials and innovation that has changed the sailing world and will also help the wider manufacturing sector. INEOS is not just a name on the side of the boat, but part of every fibre of its being. Just under a year ago, we launched a new venture, INEOS Hygienics. Now, as the first anniversary approaches, we look back on the incredible journey they've been on so far. INEOS Hygienics Hand Sanitizer is now available on the shelves of some of the biggest retailers and pharmacies in Europe. Quite a feat for a business and a brand that did not exist 12 months ago. It's March 2020 and the COVID pandemic has led to a shortage in all hygiene products, from soap to toilet paper. What was abundant, now in short supply. Hospitals are running out of hand sanitizer. Something needs to be done. That's where we can step in and provide that solution. We have the chemistry, we've got the know-how, and we've got the people. The team at Newton Aycliffe set to work building a production line to produce millions of bottles of WHO formula sanitizer to be delivered free of charge to hospitals across the UK. It took them just 10 days. The challenge we faced was enormous. I don't think anybody thought it was possible. It's absolutely fantastic that British manufacturers have stepped up and we're in this together. And we pay tribute to uh, all of those uh, businesses such as uh, INEOS who are uh, stepping forward to help in that effort. Within days, plants in Germany and France followed suit. With the logistics expertise of the INEOS Grenadiers cycling team, supplies flowed across Europe to where they were needed most. We've got a great logistics team who are constantly doing the operations for the team. I think those skills stood us in good stead, really, and I think being quite transferable, actually, in this situation. By May, the newly formed hygienics team had begun mass production in the US. We were able to connect with a group called Healthcare Ready to ensure that we're getting our product to where it's needed most. Once the shortage of hand sanitizer in healthcare had eased and countries came out of lockdown, it was time to take it to the public. INEOS Hygienics was launched to the world. Whether your life is about victory or your victories are about life. The commercial was also the first time the public got to see the touchless hand sanitizer dispenser. It's a really important piece of equipment and I like the fact that we've actually designing a really elegant and, and well-designed piece of kit. By December, the dispensers are now a familiar sight across the INEOS sports teams. With INEOS, we have set a very high new standard to protect our people and therefore protect our championship. And as the new Premier League season got underway, Tottenham Hotspur signed a deal to install the dispensers around their state-of-the-art stadium. And following some major industry awards and thousands of five-star customer reviews, Ocado, Sainsbury's and Morrison's got in on the act. We're a new player in the established hygiene market, a challenger brand, but INEOS likes a challenge. We've got a growing line of new products like sprays, wipes and dispensers with a lot more to come. And it's all because from March onwards, our people have responded to the call of duty and delivered. The COVID pandemic has had a massive impact on our lives, but there may be an even deadlier threat looming. Modern medicine is dependent on antibiotics, but there are signs that bacteria are becoming resistant to them. To tackle this, INEOS has teamed up with Oxford University to form a new institute 
aimed at battling that threat. These pictures show scientific workers in a British Commonwealth laboratory producing the wonder drug penicillin. There have been many advances in medicine that have transformed the way we live, but one of the most significant was the discovery of penicillin by Alexander Fleming in 1928 that led to the development of antibiotics. They went on to save millions of lives just decades later, and still do today. The pre-antibiotic era was an era where a simple cough, a simple urinary tract infection, or a simple cut led to death. When we started the use of antibiotics back in the 1940s, one has to remember they were truly a wonder drug. They were incredibly effective. Antibiotics are a cornerstone of modern medicine, and if they were to disappear, the results could be catastrophic. In fact, some germs are already resistant to drugs, causing 1.5 million deaths a year. It's antimicrobial resistance, you can't see it, you can't feel it, um, but nonetheless, it's increasing year on year. Even Fleming predicted, when he accepted his Nobel Prize, that there would inevitably be the rise of resistance. He was right. As germs multiply, they evolve, and over time, rare mutations can cause the DNA of the microbe to become resistant to antibiotics. They develop mechanisms to stop drugs, including changing their cells, to remove the drug's target, producing enzymes to break them down, and also restricting access for them by limiting their entry points. Sadly, the model of how we develop antibiotics has broken. That is the reason why we don't have new antibiotics in the pipeline, because the pharmaceutical industry doesn't necessarily, I'm afraid, have the financial incentive to develop these drugs, because the financial rewards have diminished. To combat this lack of funding, INEOS have donated £100 million to Oxford University to create the INEOS Oxford Institute for Antimicrobial Research. The antimicrobial resistance is one of these um, hidden dangers for the human race. I don't think it's widely recognised yet. You've got that history here, probably the best medical research you can find worldwide. One of the exciting parts of this collaboration with a very successful business is that we hope that they will help us translate this primary research for human benefit. This institute will be based in the new Life and Mind building at Oxford, bringing together a number of research departments. It will establish Oxford as a leader in antimicrobial resistance. It will allow us to have a programme to design novel drugs for human medicine. It will allow us to design novel drugs in animals, because at the moment we've got this ridiculous situation where we're using human antibiotics as animal growth promoters. And essentially, we also want to have some voice on policy. Penicillin was first turned into a workable medicine right here in Oxford. So it seems entirely fitting that we should again be at the vanguard of studying antimicrobial resistance. It doesn't get much worthier than, uh, than helping save the human race, really, does it? You know, a pretty worthy cause, and uh, off we go. It may still be early in the year, but we've been as busy as ever in the business. Here are the stories you won't want to miss. An ambitious plan to build a preschool that's entirely fossil fuel free is underway in Gothenburg, Sweden. Called the Hope Project, it will utilize sustainable PVC pipes supplied by PipeLife and created in partnership with Ineos-owned Inovin. These PVC pipes will be created using Biovin, an oil made from renewable wood pulp residue introduced in 2019. The use of Biovin not only makes the product sustainable, but drastically reduces the carbon footprint by 90% compared to conventional PVC production. This January, INEOS Styrolution received the 2020 Public Welfare Practice Award in China for their work during the pandemic. Awarded by experts from public and private bodies, it recognizes their efforts to aid local communities, including donating thousands of face masks to businesses and COVID-19 care packs to schools. Newly formed INEOS Energy announced its first acquisition in March with the $150 million purchase of Hesse's oil and gas assets in Denmark. 
INEOS will acquire 61.5% of the SID ANA oil fields, as well as 4.8% of Solsort. Recently, Executive Chairman Brian Gilvari spoke to the press about the deal and how it will help with the clean energy transition. We all know as part of the energy transition, we're still going to need more oil and Denmark knows that and therefore it's sort of set a timetable for us to run these assets down. Now, you know, the life of these fields is probably out max 2045, which is five years before cessation of production. So I think the key thing here is we can meet the energy transition requirements in terms of oil, but at the same time, alongside that, we'll be developing a carbon capture project to demonstrate how we can deal with the CO2 associated with fossil fuels and put that CO2 back into the ground. The deal is linked to the Green Sands Carbon Storage Project, which aims to repurpose the Siri Oilfields Basin as a place to safely store up to 8 million tonnes of CO2 every year, meeting Denmark's national 2030 emissions target. Following on from this, Ineos Energy also announced the sale of its oil and gas business in Norway for $615 million to PGNIG Upstream, effective from January 1, 2021. In the northwest of the UK, a consortium of businesses, including Innovan, has come together called HiNet Northwest. They're looking to create a sustainable hydrogen network to help tackle climate change. This will see plants and pipelines constructed to provide hydrogen fuel for homes, businesses and heavy transport. Existing gas pipelines will be repurposed near Liverpool to transport captured CO2 into old reservoirs. And the unique landscape of Cheshire will also provide storage opportunities for hydrogen underground in salt caverns. If these measures are successful, it will establish the UK as a world leader in clean energy innovation and will help reduce carbon emissions by millions of tonnes every year. INEOS are making history in Belgium as for the first time, hydrogen will be used to generate electricity and heat in a commercial scale plant in Antwerp. Partnering with energy company Engie, the plant will trial replacing natural gas with hydrogen to power its turbine. Starting at 10% and rising to 20, this trial could reduce emissions drastically going forward and is fully in line with INEOS' strategy to avoid CO2 emissions at source. Mercedes Formula One is gearing up for another season of high-octane drama. Continuing their successful partnership, world champion Lewis Hamilton has signed a new one-year contract. The new racing car design was also revealed this March, and the team have been hard at work preparing for the new challenges and rule changes that await them. It's actually a year where almost everything changes. The cars are six kilos heavier, we've got new tyres, and then a completely new raft of regulation. The person that learns fastest tends to win. That's our show for now. We're really proud to have been part of this special America's Cup. And we're enormously proud of Sir Ben and the whole team and the way they fought right to the end. And of our competitors, Luna Rossa and American Magic, for providing a thrilling Prada Cup. But our special thanks go to Team New Zealand and the people of New Zealand for welcoming the America's Cup teams to their shores in the most difficult of circumstances and putting on a really compelling and exciting event. The 170 years of hurt continues, but the fire in the belly to bring the cup home remains. Until next time, take care, stay safe.